have 200 pounds in my bank account right now. Don't even get me excited. <laughs> How much did you lose at that time? Try lie. Try lie. Be honest. Half, half a million. Reality is for you to mold. Reality is for you to create. You are in charge of creating your life. That was the most powerful information I discovered at the time. This month in the UK, it's Black History Month, and we want to highlight some phenomenal black men and women who are doing some incredible things here in the UK and are making black history. We want to celebrate their achievements, we want to hear their story, and of course, we want to take some phenomenal information from them. So, throughout this month, we are dedicating an extra episode to the game changers in this space. I hope you guys enjoy, I hope you guys are inspired, and I hope you guys are ready to have a motherfucking good time. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have such an inspiring person here for Black History Month today. She is an entrepreneur, she is a hair care specialist and is the founder of an amazing hair and beard growth company called Plants Made. I am honoured to introduce you to none other than Amma Amoaje. Amma, my queen, thank you so much for coming. How are you today? I'm good, man. Thank you so much. Do you know what? I'm actually so, so excited. Like, honestly, people don't know that we have been in cross paths. Yeah. Cross, cross, cross paths. Cross, wait, wait. That's not it. Cross, we've crossed paths yes. for, for, mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Yes. And honestly, to see what you are doing in the game right now is phenomenal. But I want to start at the beginning. When did you first realise that you wanted to get into entrepreneuring, entrepreneurism, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, <laughs> <laughs> entrepreneurship, I hear that. Entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> entrepreneur, entrepreneur, Entre uh, yeah. entrepreneur, yeah, 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 entrepreneurship. Um, so basically, um, I was in uni. This mm -hmm. was like 2017. No, 20. Yeah, 2017. I just read a book that everyone hates um, called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Every, I, I, it's fine because back then it was back then, so you can't you can't beef me now on it. I've already done that, mm -hmm. um, but I basically read it because my brother was like, he's just read it and he he kind of had like you know an epiphany. So I was like, okay, let me read it and see because I wasn't really enjoying my degree, and and not that. So I studied psychology, and it's not that I didn't enjoy my degree. I didn't enjoy the path that it would take me on. Okay. I, I didn't like the whole seven years for a doctor piece. I, that wasn't really for me. That's not your bag. That's not me. The time, the payoff, it didn't really match up. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I was like, hmm, can I actually sit there and like help people with mental health like 24-7 for the rest of my life? I don't know, because I'm an empath. That's too much. You know, I, I feel everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was just not going to happen. So basically, I was like, okay, I'm looking for another path. And making money, financial freedom, helping people, building businesses. That was all in the book. And I was like, Do you know what? I like this. This is a new path. Like, I didn't know anyone in my immediate fam family or circle that had a business or anything like that. So that wasn't exposed to me. A, lo a lot of people had that. I didn't have that. So this was like my gateway into like business or like a new path to a career. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I was like, yeah, this degree is cute. I'm going to finish it, but I'm going to build a business after this. And I'm not sure if I'm going to enter the corporate ladder like that. So that was like my entry point. And basically my last year of uni, I was just like, there was a lot of clothing brands that were popping up. Um, it's like uni. Dropship here, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Like literally um, my like people in my uni had clothing brands. Okay. Yeah, like proper like hands on. And I was like getting into that. I was basically helping them with their marketing. And I was like, ooh, the strategies I'm coming up with are helping them. They're getting sales, they're getting more recognition. I'm like, okay, this is good. So yeah, I basically started out that way. Did I make money? Not necessarily. A couple hundred pound. Um, <laughs> a little bit of this, a little <laughs> but, bit you know, As a uni student, a couple hundred pound 
is beautiful, you know. Yeah. It is literally the lottery. It's lunch. <laughs> it's, it's for the, lunch, for the semester. You know, and maybe a few chicken wings <laughs> yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like, you know, I wasn't a millionaire by eighteen. That that was not my story. Um it was more figuring things out from twenty and then that was kind of like the start. So what made you continue your uni degree knowing that you didn't want to pursue psychology? Why didn't you change into a different course? If I'm being honest. Keep it a buck. I'm Ghanaian. You know? My Ghanaian mother and father, if they met me in that in that pathway and I said, Hey, I don't I wanna throw these three years I've done already away. I would not be standing here today. Yeah. You can hey. imagine going going home to your parents. I don't want to do psychology anymore. I've read a book. <laughs> The book is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm because of this book, I want to cancel the plans. I think a lot of people, and especially coming from African backgrounds, go through that mm. where they feel like they have to take a more um, traditional course yeah. in order to be successful. How did you combat that, knowing the kind of background that you, you came from? So I had to make it legitimate. Um, and obviously when we like get to the point where like plant made was made, like we'll get there. But like it was a fight. Mm -hmm. So even after uni, I did odd jobs and I basically took an entire year out or about nine months. Yeah. Just freelancing, trying to like make money online, trying to help people with their marketing, like pitching clients. That's basically it was so rough, dusty. The bank account was dusty. I was dusty. It was a mess. And yeah. every other minute, my mum would come to me and be like, can you just quit so, and get a job? Yeah. So it was a fight. I was fighting for my life. <laughs> Girl. Fighting for my life. Fighting for um, any any ounce of money that can enter my bank account. Um, and at the end of the day, I got to a point where I was like, can I live someone else's designed life for me? Or... Can I just forge my own path? You know? Wow. And I was just like, it, it's just come to that point. And don't get it twisted. It was really hard because I'm actually a people pleaser. Like, I'm, a, I'm the last born. I was like doing everything everyone told me to do. So that was like inherent in me. So it was really hard to go against that. But like from then on, I've just been selfish. But in turn, I've helped everyone. I've helped my family. And selfishness actually was my superpower yeah in building something that yeah helps a lot of people like thousands do you know what? it's so crazy that you say that selfish is is your superpower because especially like going back to the culture that we come from Facts. where it's really a lot of decisions that are made especially when you are in certain positions in your household is to essentially please and save mm -hmm. the family like i remember the pressure of of, of feeling like the family saviour, where it's like, okay, you know, this person didn't bang, this person didn't bang, okay, it's your turn. <laughs> you must be the doctor. You must be yeah, the lawyer. Exactly. Like, my mum was trying to push this lawyer thing onto me for so long. And when I went to A-Love, when they were talking about actors, Reyes and men, I said, fuck all this shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And I think it's it's so, it for me, being a, a misfit, being rebellious. Mm. Being rebellious can save your family. That part, that part. And the funny thing is, remember like where our parents are coming from? So do, are your parents immigrants? Yes. Yeah, so you're first gen? I'm first gen, first baby. First gen, baby, Big okay. First, I was the first person in my family to be born here. So wow. I'm really first gen. You first first. I'm really, really. I'm Number first, one. I'm, I'm first and the last and the last and first. Okay. Number one. <laughs> Take that trophy. <laughs> Take the trophy. And being a first gen is, it was tough. Like, it really was tough. Like, my parents went around. They were working all the time trying to provide. Seeing that struggle, I was like, first and foremost, like, my parents need to be taken care of. Like, wow. that's like one of my missions for my life. Like, from young, I knew that that was a thing. Because I was like, damn, like, I ain't seen these yeah toiling our friendly like yeah damn and it was just unfortunate but i knew the hustle had to be made because you just dragged three kids and then you had another one here and you have to make something of yourself yeah you were something back there it's not recognized here you have to start from the ground up and you know i was like seven eight or like nine reading like my parents um uni um papers and stuff like that 
which is insane, or mm. even typing it up. Wow. It was just like, it wasn't the ghetto, but it was just like, it was rough. It was rough. It was rough. But I was like, damn, like, look at the hustle here. Mm-hmm. But you know what's funny? I also realized that the hard work wasn't going to be enough. Like, working hard wasn't going to be enough to get us out of this situation. Yeah. And it's really sad because it's something that's told to us that hard work is the only thing you need to do mm-hmm. to get where you want to be. But it's not. It's about leverage. It's yeah. about building something that's different or aligning yourself with something that's different. Let's say if you work a job. It's, it's, it was a lot at 20 to be exposed to that information because it basically took me away from everything I knew. Yeah, which it was, makes, yeah. you know, the, the school to job pl- pipeline, like the misfit. Wow. I felt really different. I couldn't really talk to a lot of people because like, they're like, yeah, I'm going to get a job. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want that. Yeah. It was like how, like, even when I first started my business, people were like, oh, so you oh, got a job. Business. You got a job. Oh, she broke. Oh, so you're actually going to do this. Bro. Talk to me yeah. about that period. So... We've come from, you finish university, yep. you're in between, you're fighting for your life as a freelancer. What was the eureka moment when you decided to to start and establish your own business? Okay, so basically, I unfortunately listened to my mum. Like, I fortunately and unfortunately listened to my mum. I got a job in recruitment. It's like super salesy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the bridge between entrepreneurship and corporate. But it was a mess put me in a hard department that like from day I like the first day they were like yeah you've got a difficult market but like you'll be fine yeah I was like, mm-hmm. it's tough shit but you go fight through <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Mm, I don't know I don't know about all that um why am I getting hard why am I getting hard what I do and the funny thing is there was another guy that came the next week and he he got the easier thing and I'm like why didn't you give that to me damn but that was God that was God he did that wow because he, he was like I, I've already figured out an exit plan so don't worry about it um, but yeah, I struggled my, my way through those six months at that company. And yeah, they, the thing is I was putting a hundred percent effort, like hundred percent. I was doing everything I need to do and above asking, and just nothing was working. I was just like, damn, like I said, working hard was not, will not always get you what you need to do, especially yeah. if you're not aligned with what you're doing. So yeah, unfortunately I got fired and then two weeks it was locked down. And I was like, oh, this is, this is the ghetto. Oh, this is this the ghetto right here. I've arrived. <laughs> Damn, some exit, exit, where's the exit? Oh, pack your bags. <laughs> You've arrived. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Okay. 200 pounds of my bank account. Wow. Um, I don't know what to do. I was like, wow. But there was only one thing I could do. And that was be delusional. Because it really can't get worse than a global pandemic. Yeah. And no job, right? Yes. You got you now. You well, crazy now. Yeah. You crazy. I really. I topped. I topped the topped. Okay. Yeah. I was on top of the top. Okay. There, there was no way I could get any worse than that. I was just delusional, and I was like, you know what? Let me start something. And the funny thing is, I wasn't actually doing plant made. It was something completely different. I was working on a men's skincare brand. Okay. I was like, mm. but I. I always. Um. I always was taking care of my hair. I had some hair loss issues. And I was always, like, finding new products. I was always, like, going into the hair shop and buying things. But then it got to the point where I was like, none of this is working for my issues. Yeah. Um, and this was, like, the first ever time I had tinkered. So, obviously, in African cultures, like, there's, there's a section of the community that, like, make their own products. They might, like, you know, whip up a shea butter, whip up a cocoa butter, yeah. slather it on them, you know, like, homemade. Yes. And it's just the home thing. And then you just get, you get... You know, your pots. Yes. You get, you get your pots yes. and whip shea butter and you're like, that is the lotion. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. You know, that, that's it. Not in my household, unfortunately, because no time. Uh, no time for that. <laughs> but I appreciated it. So, yeah, I was like, OK, let me figure out something. And I had the time. So I was just going through research. I have a science background. So I was like going through articles and stuff. I don't even know how. I got to the solutions I got to, but I got there. Mm -hmm. And I was just basically finding out about like Indian herbs, African herbs, stuff that like like hibiscus. I'm like, what? I drink that like every other day. Like that's a, that's a herb in a Ghanaian household. Yes. 
not to realize they had all these benefits. I was like, wow, I've really been sleeping on this. And for my hair as well. So I just, basically, my brother was trying to grow his beard and potentially his hair back. I was trying to grow my hairline back. I was like, 50-50? He was like, yes. Amazon delivery next day. A bunch of herbs come into my face and I'm like, let's see what I can do here. Do a little something, something. Do a little something, something. And then I made something. I was tracking it, videos, pictures. 10 days, I'm like, wait, what the hell did I just do? Because wow. the hairs, the baby hairs, the way they're standing now, they've never stood like this before. They never stood like this they've before. They've never stood like this before. I was like, did I just do something? Maybe I did. Posted it on Instagram. Bear in mind, like, this was only people I knew. It wasn't like a thing. And like, I had a few girls that like did natural hair stuff. So I was, I was just basically checking in with them. Like, oh, what's in here? I was like, oh, this and that, like bad ingredients, bro. If you have the time, minute. Because <laughs> I do. People lazy. And also, global pandemic, don't forget. Yeah. It's a lot. You had time. So I had the time. And maybe they don't have the time. And then some mutual of mine was like, oh, could I buy this? And I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have 200 pounds in my bank account right now. Don't even get me excited. <laughs> Don't get me excited because I will run. I will run out of these COVID streets. I will run <laughs> to the streets, find what I can, get it to you. Respect. Do you want me to walk? Because I can walk, walk to your run, house. Bike, whatever. I'll get there. I'll get it to you. <laughs> you want two? You want two, one? three? I was like, yes, hundred percent. Let me buy some stuff. Anyone else? Anyone? Hundred DMs. I said, you wow. don't even mess with me on my birthday. <laughs> your hair, your edges are more important than my life. Wow. But I get it. I got it. Uh, but I was like, wow. I don't know what I did, but you it's, called, it's called when opportunity meets preparation. Luck happens. It's okay? very interesting. Did you realize the hair loss issue in the community before you started this thing? Because for a hundred people wow. to mess message you means that there is a problem. Yeah, I did not realize, and it's mad because like I I was a part of the community as well. Mm -hmm. Like I am a part of the community, but it's just I just wasn't looking at it. So because I wasn't looking at it, I didn't see it. But once I saw it, I was like, oh, it's everywhere. And the, the thing is, it is. I feel like a lot of us, and the thing is, me me included. I have had issues with my hair for many, many years. Um, I haven't been taught how to look after my hair. My edge, like everything for me is is to hide. So whether that's, okay, my, my raw hair's falling out, let me hide it under braids. My cord, my edges is cooling out, let me glue a frontal. My hair is shedding in the middle, let me, cut, let, let me, let me, let me slick it back and put, um, and put something on top of it. It's never really to... Um, resolve the issue but yeah. to bury it and I think it wasn't until the natural hair movement started coming forward that I started feeling like ah, all my sisters with their 4C hair their bouncy luscious hair wow it's possible for them to grow that type of hair I need to do something about mine prior to prior to it my I was so detached from my real hair that I just used to shave it I swear to you I, as soon as it started to grow to a certain point I used to shave the whole thing off yeah and I think that really did stem from a lot of self-hate that I had growing up. But going to see products like yours and what it's doing for the community, it gives women like me hope. <laughs> That's, wow, something can really come from this scalp. Somebody yeah. can, something, can really, something can really grow from this scalp. Yeah. Cool. We spoke about the genesis, mm -hmm. how it started. So you got your first 100 DMs. Talk to me about the process after that. Boy, um, and like, shout out to you for that little monologue. That was, that was QT. Okay, Thank you. That was QT. Um, but like, boy, I was like, there's something here. Mm -hmm. It's helping people. I feel like I have a mission. Let's go for it. So unfortunately, it was the ghetto because I was selling it in no labels, no name, just ship. You know, in a white box. In a white box. Just, it was just raw pack, mail, pack, royal pack and mailing. Um, pack and go, pack and go, pack and go, pack and it was, go. It was, it was a hot mess, if I'm being honest. No but, branding. But no just branding, vibes. just vibes. Yeah. So let me call it something. Okay. Plant it. Mm -hmm. Let me call it something. All right. Packaging. Okay. We're getting somewhere here. 
And, you know, I was like, I'm actually proud of this. Like, wow, like, this is something I've created with my own hands and it's actually helping people. And the funny thing is, even when I was freelancing, I always had, like, a a bias to wellness. So I was like, why not be a part of something that directly changes someone's life? Yeah. Um, and I didn't even realise the severity that these products would change people's lives. Like, even till this day, I'm like, wow. Um, but yeah, I set up an Instagram. I was like, bruv, let me be a beg and let me do what I need to do. Message people, literally message people like, hey, I've got a business. Like, this is what we do. Look at the before and afters. Let me know if you need anything. If th this is an issue of yours. And on Twitter, I remember Black Pound Day, like, arose around that time I launched. Mm -hmm. I literally rode that wave every month until Black Pound Day was just an everyday thing because it, it achieved its job of, you know, making black black British people recognise that, you know, you need to buy into your communities. Yeah. Because that wasn't a thing before, if, I'm, if we're being honest. Oh, 100%. Not as, mu not as much as now. Um, but yeah, I leveraged those things and I was like, let me build this into something. But like, the funny thing is there was... There wasn't really like figures, revenue things. Like it was like cool. This is nice, but like I didn't realize like the little action I was doing had like a massive amounts of effects. Couple influences here and there. You know, very small. Yes, you've worked with. Uh, obviously, we've seen you with our good sister Nella. We've yep. seen you with uh, Mariam as mm -hmm. well. Also has worked with you guys. It's so excited for you to to work with these bigger platforms or also when I go on TikTok and I see the reviews of just everyday people not even just everyday people girl I saw something about a dog ciao they probably have dogs <laughs> I was like wow this is this is absolutely crazy I want to go back to your mental at this time okay. obviously you're coming from a background that is not so entrepreneur in understanding so they don't really know about the entrepreneurial world and you're you've started at home what was it like starting that business and what was your support system like so i literally sat my mom and dad down before i even launched the business so this was um maybe a, a month out from launching and the funny thing i just seen this girl called marie mm -hmm. from moon x cosmetics in the u.s do a million in Two, wait what was it was it eight minutes yeah a million and eight minutes i said what the hell is this girl selling i've never seen numbers like this in my life selling skincare handmade skincare i said what the the very thing like the very similar vertical that i'm about to go into hey this is a sign from god please mm -hmm. let me go speak to my parents right now <laughs> drag my mom and dad i was like okay do you know what? i'm gonna book a meeting in with you if that's all right talk to your secretaries all right because i need to chat Guys, I love you and everything. I get it. You're worried about me, all of this. But this is the one time I just need the space. Like, I don't need money. I just need space. Because prior to that, obviously, my mom would be like, oh, she's going to get a job. She yeah. knew I didn't want to work for anyone. She knew. But she still pushed. Because, you know, your child is important at the yeah, end of the day. I get it. I, I got it. But, you know, it was conflicting with my belief in myself. So I was just like, just, just, you know, leave me alone, respectfully. Because that will be like, okay, that's you confirming you believe in me. That's it. Yeah. I don't need any work. Like, I don't, I don't need any of that. I just need the specs. So I was just like, is that all right? And they were like, ooh, reluctantly. I was like, okay. I said, don't worry, I'll prove, I'll prove myself right. And I didn't realise I, I would to the degree I did. <laughs> But a little belief in yourself could go a long way because it was so outside of my normal at the time. I had no money in my bank account. Yes. I had no, like, I had skills in marketing, but, like, not to the degree of, like, I knew how to build a business from scratch. Like, yeah. I didn't have all of that. It was more, like, aligned myself with the business that's already been built, you know? So everything I was learning front hand. And to be honest, at that time, I, my mentor was way better than maybe even last year or maybe even top of this year because it was like I had not I had already hit the bottom and there was nothing that could get in my way you had nothing to lose I have nothing to lose and yeah. you, that's a beautiful place no one knows you no one knows what this is so there's no one to chat no one to compare nothing nothing was there so I was like it's literally the world's your oyster the world's your the oyster point. and you've had um, planted for 
the past two years now. Yeah, well had planted for a year, plant made for another year. <laughs> okay, so the business, I know we had we had a, a situation with the name change, which we'll get into when we're talking about your obstacles during the time. Mm -hmm. Tell me currently the the value of the business. We need the numbers, my yeah. sister. If we're talking about value, the, the valuation, if y'all are business persons now. What's the valuation? Uh, it'd probably be at like 12 million. 12 million yeah and how much in the last two years has planted made four million and counting four million pounds <laughs> well, four point, like 4.2 4.2 yeah. million in two years coming from a business that started at 200 pounds in your mum's house well, well I, I used 100 pounds because I needed another 100 pounds for food. Oh, you're, yes. You, yeah, we have, we've got to eat. <laughs> you know. We need the fuel. We need to eat. I need to eat. <laughs> for me, it started from mm -hmm. 100 pounds yep. investment yep. to now bringing in 4.4 million. Mm -hmm. When you hear those numbers out loud, how does it make you feel? So you know, it's funny, yeah, because like, especially at like the beginning of like me discovering what business is and all this stuff, I was just like, wow, I could not even fathom making this much money. And don't get twisted, this is my business money, not my own money, mm -hmm. period. Okay. But I, I just was like, this was a dream. And now I'm like, this is not enough. More. It's, it's like, bruv, I need to be racking in 40 million in a one year now. Yeah. Not like four million in two years, forty million in one year. Like I'm like nah, but but the funny thing is at this stage, <laughs> at every stage it's it's like okay cool you know, reach your first six figures. It's like wow that's amazing. First, first See million. I know six figure Abba. <laughs> I know six figure Abba. So <laughs> let, let's let's talk about how we know each other. That's true. right. So it's so we weird. Back. <laughs> we go back. So basically, I met Abba during lockdown yeah and i believe you just started planted i think you might have been mm -hmm. six months in yeah you were six months in when you first man. started yeah and obviously i have a marketing background i was doing paid socials you were you were doing plant, uh, planted but you also were in the marketing space so we had met in clubhouse and i remember you had just made i think you just made your yeah. first six figures yeah yeah and I remember feeling so inspired by you. Like, you were someone that really inspired me, especially during those times where, for me, me too, my life was a skedaddle. We was, we was, <laughs> my life was so much chaos during those times. And I remember seeing you and seeing someone who is, who is of similar age to me, who is a black woman, who is doing phenomenal things. So, yeah, guys, we met on Clubhouse. And I used to start these rooms about marketing. Mm -hmm. And we used to basically um, help people with their marketing in their business and just give them advice. It was me, Emma, and a bunch of other girls. Um, and very shortly after, I think I, I just love talking to people. I think that's when I realised that I really enjoyed having conversations with people. And then obviously, of course, we then started cocktails and takeaways. But it's crazy how two years later we are now. Is it two years or one and a half no, years two later? Years. Two it's years. Actually, yeah, right we are now time. sitting here and, and you are where you are. And, and I, am, I, I am where I am. And it's just, God is good, girl. God. The best. God is. God is. <laughs> the best. I have a question for you. So what is the mindset Ooh. that you need to be successful? Because... I can imagine 200 pounds in the bank account and it's either food mm -hmm. or products. Yep. It's either plantain or paying for postage. Mm -hmm. What is the mindset that you need, even in those times where you are on a negative to take you to the top? Do you know what's funny, yeah? It's so easy to be bogged down in your current situation and mm -hmm. think that that's the end. Um, a lot of people live either in their past or their present. And don't get twisted, it's not bad living in your present. It's very bad living in your past. But people don't realise how beautiful the future is and the fact that we have the control. I'm not going to say that I ha was in the worst situation because there's people with kids, there's people with people, you know, carers and stuff. Like, I... I was not in that situation. I was only in charge of myself. So I could make those hard, fast decisions because I was in charge of myself. Um, 
so I could be a little bit more daring. Which is why, like, if anyone is in a situation like that, that they don't have a lot of responsibilities, they don't have a lot of money going out, and they find themselves in a crossroads of, okay, should I do what people think I should do, or do I do what my heart desires? Yeah. And I think if you are in a place where you are taking care of yourself, 100% do what your heart decides, because you're never going to get this time back. Do you know what's funny? I, I, I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't make that decision. And a decision literally changes your life yeah because once you start to set your eyes onto something you say god or the universe whatever you believe in starts to bring stuff and it's not gonna it's not gonna be a hard fast yes every time but it's gonna be opportunities you can say yes or no to that start arising as soon as you align yourself with a path so obviously i was making a product someone asked me i could have said no if i said no we want to be here right now yeah <laughs> Drizzle, wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> she like, cute. She, she cute, but she wouldn't be here because I didn't take the opportunity. I said yes, and I kept saying yes, and I kept saying yes. And that those yeses kept on, you know, building and compounding into, you know, what Plant Made is today. But it's a it's a it's an unchangeable belief. Like, I don't care. Like, this is gonna be my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm gonna make it happen. Like, I don't care what anybody says, this is going to be my life. And do you know how hard it is to, like, stand in that belief? And people are going to really be like, this doesn't make any sense because they know you as who you are now. But it's your job to prove who you want to become. Yeah. And walk into that greatness. And walk into that person. Yeah. And it's, it's like, people always hold you to the standard that you, that, that fits their, you know, like, their version of you. They're going to be like, this is who I know I to be. So, like, this is it. All of a sudden, you start to change. You're like, wait, I don't know you like this. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's about being the underdog and proving your point. Like, this is my belief and I'm going to make it happen, regardless of what anyone says. So, it's funny because people think that they need people to believe in them to do something. You don't need anyone. Just yeah. yourself. Just yourself. 100%. And, and be resourceful. But I think that's the first thing, the belief. And then the skills, like you just need skills. What is, what do, what does it take to build something? Is, is it marketing? Is it, you know, being able to create content? Is it being able to get eyes? Is it being able to create something that people need, want, something that can last? Um, aligning yourself, do you have any leverage? Like, what do you have? It's funny because people even like look at, let's say the Kardashians or, you know, anyone who's ra been raised in money and be like, oh, but they were raised with money. So... Of course they were going to be successful. Do you know how many people, do you know how many famous kids are broke or yeah. like no one knows who they are or they ain't doing anything? Money doesn't, money doesn't always equate to success. Agreed. There's skill, there's purpose behind something that will drive it. So like even the Kardashians inspire me to this day because oh, Kylie specifically. Kylie and now Kim, because uh, Kim, she's, she saw Kylie and she was like, oh, yeah, okay. She's she she was like, yeah. skims. And I was like, yes. Okay. Yeah. She was like, nah, you, <laughs> I'm not going to be taken for a dickhead. Yeah. Okay. My youngest sister's not going to be richer than me. I'm going to be richer You better than level her. up. Yes. <laughs> but there was a time where Kylie shot up amongst all yes. of her older sisters and it was like, she, with the lip brand, yeah. She had the skill of creating something that they didn't as of yet, which was attention. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you really want to learn something or if you really want to build something, you have to be okay with learning from people, even if you don't like them. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because they have the, they've done something right. Mm -hmm. you, you can't be in a position and be like, oh, I'm smarter than them. But they have the, they have the results. You don't. That's another thing. It's, there's, it's zero ego in this game. Oh my God. Zero ego in this game. Let them know. I think the one thing that I've realised in this age, and I love how people want to have, have understood the power of being your own boss, the opportunities that you have of becoming an entrepreneur. But I think a lot of times I, I feel like it comes from a place of I don't want to take orders. I want to be the boss. And even as the boss you also still have to be a learner. Even oh, as a exactly. boss, you still have to submit. Even to people who you are, who in, in perception you are above because they have something that you don't understand. There, there are so many times where 
me as, as somebody who, who has a team that, yeah, I might be the one paying for you, but there's sometimes I, I need to learn and understand and I don't understand cameras, mm -hmm. show me. I, I don't understand certain things, show me. I don't understand numbers, show me. Because it's so important as a leader to know every element of your business. But as a human being, you don't have that capacity. So you have to learn. But there's some people that just want to be, well, I'm the boss, I'm right. This is how I do this. This is my way. You're in my territory. <laughs> this is how I like to do things and I'm going to do it. And yeah. if you don't like it, go to hell. Those are the people that don't last long. So I find that even as a leader, you still have to have the understanding to 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 um, to still be one to, mm. to be educated. Mm -hmm. and, with, and that's with everyone and everything. Higher, lower, middle. That's a, that's a fact. For me, I'm always in the case of, if it's not data or from the customer, like, it's a, if it's an opinion, get out. Yeah. Every, every time I open my mouth, it's from a customer or data. Every time. Because there's no guessing here. Mm -hmm. There's no ego here. I don't need to be right. I don't care. What I care about is whether it's been backed or whether the customer, you know, the person that pays our bills. Yes. If they're happy. If they're not happy, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Close like, your lips. That, that, that's me like that's me and and like i'm really happy that like that is who you know i always prioritize that because yeah there's a lot of people that talk crazy sometimes and they're like yeah you know it's all about the money and this and that and at the end of the day like that can all be taken away from you if you don't do especially right now building a business is all about building a customer experience yes. it's all about taking care of the people that you serve it's about building something that they care about. It's about building a community, something that they can be a part of. And all these things come with sacrifice, death to the ego, and being submissive. It, it's a fact. And if you yeah. can't do that, it's not for you, babes. It, it, it's okay. Like, it's okay. This isn't corporate. Ego can take you all the way up to the ladder. This can't. This can't. Because it's all about skill and also aligning yourself with, you know, the people that pay the bills. So, Which is your customer. That, that part. Talk to me about planted customer experience. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are watching this that want to get into um, is it entrepreneuring, entrepreneurship. <laughs> that want to get into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Listen, I don't know why they called me for this. <laughs> I want to get into entrepreneurship. How important is prioritizing the customer Ooh. in your model and how does planter do it yeah so um yeah like it's top it's a top mm -hmm. priority i didn't do um when it comes to shipping when it comes to the product itself whether because we make the products ourselves so that is more unique to us most people kind of source product from manufacturers and stuff like that we make it ourselves so we turn raw materials into this so we can control the actual um the actual product efficacy if it works or not so if someone's saying that like oh like this inches isn't working as well as this inches i'm like i go straight to the production i'm like what happened mm -hmm. or i'm asking joyce my production manager what happened this can't happen again this like especially even in the, the summer soil like our, our whip butter right here that was melting she was melting she was melting and she was ah and we just because it was just like, this wasn't planned. Like, no one knew it was going to be 30 degrees for three months, you know? So it was like, how do we deal with this? Yes. And like, we were going back and forth with the customer. We're saying, don't, don't worry, we'll send you another one for free. You know, and things like that. Like, for us, we're like, okay, do you know what? If you feel like you've been wronged, or if we feel like like this situation just is not good, we're, we, we'll always be like, I'm so sorry for this. Don't worry, we'll send you a new one. We'll send you this. Or we'll, we'll prioritize that. Like, that's... Even even if someone's had, because um, we use a lot of like herbs that a lot of people don't know of. So some people have like might have hidden allergies. Some people are like, oh, I'm reacting really weird to this, and I'm like, don't worry, stop using it first and foremost. Maybe use something else that I know that has like no, you know, no extra pizzazz. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very simple ingredients in it. I'll give you that, and then yeah, I'll refund you straight away. Like I make sure like our customers are actually taken care of. Don't get twisted. There's going to be some people that don't see that and they're going to be like, eh, te, te, online, emails, crazy. Yeah. Sometimes like, they come with that energy that mm -hmm. like, I don't think it's deserved. But, you know, it's just they're passionate and they feel like they've been wrong by other people. So they kind of throw us into the barrel. But like, 
really and truly, we we will always prioritize what the customer is doing. And I tell team members, like everyone needs to work together. Our customer service needs yep. to feed into everyone else because the content we make is all about the customers, educating them or making sure that we're showing it a difference of before and after so that people can see themselves in whoever we're showing. Um, we, you know, the website, does the website work? Do, can people find what they need to find? If not, okay. Like they are, the customer is literally the center of what we do. And if you are, again, not willing to give up that control of like, oh, this is nice, this is cute. Like you might have to take something down that like you loved. That picture was cute. But it's confusing people. Yeah. You know, this little icon here was, oh, it was sweet, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Customers like, get up, <laughs> you know. And then they, are you trying to change lives or, you know, are you just trying to like, you know, bloat, you know. Yeah. Are, are you, are you kind of, are you trying to gloat about what you built? Like, at the end of the day, like, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work. So in the, in the pyramid of importance, we have our, our customers first. 100%. And then I'm going to say, do we have the team? Oh. Oh, yeah. We've got the team. So yeah, yeah. currently, how many people are part of the planted team? 15. So you've got 15 core team members, including yourself? Yeah, including myself and our production staff as well. So we've got two people remote on customer service. We've literally, as of today, we have a third. Congratulations, my good sister. Um, so that's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, we have our production staff and then we have people working in areas of talent, people working in content, um, op ops, finance. With all these people that you have, my question to you is what are the skills that it takes to be a leader? Girl, first and foremost, pray. <laughs> She said because, Jesus. Because now, Jesus. Sometimes I'm flustered, man. Like sometimes you know we're like life life comes to you fast and you're like, I'm just trying to live. I'm just trying to live. You know, I'm just trying to catch a breath every other second. But damn, it gets a lot. Like, especially when you have like these goals, like I'm talking about 40 million. Like, that's my next goal. Yeah. I'm like, rah, like that's a lot, you know, like that's a different person. That's a different me. But for me. Even the other day, I read myself a filth in front of the core team and I was just like, do you know what? I'm not communicating enough to you guys. I'm not telling you in good time what you need to do and I might be rattling you real quick. So I put out an entire plan for the for this quarter right here because this is the money-making quarter for us. Oh, yes. Q4? Q4! If you know, you if know. You, if you don't know, Q4, okay, you know. <laughs> you know. Q4 is like the Super Bowl. Yes. It's like the Olympics. It is. It's like, you know... It's the finals of the World Cup. It mm -hmm. is everything. Right. Yeah, the Q4 is very space. sweet. Yeah. So if people don't know what they're doing, child, you ain't hitting nothing. You ain't nothing. <laughs> you ain't got no nothing. No no goals. No nothing. No money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Better recognize that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I read myself a film. I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna do better than that. And I'm always like, I'm always here. If there's anything wrong, please let me know. Or I'll fix it. You know, or and I also give my my staff a lot of autonomy. Like, this is your role. This is your role. Like, if someone's if someone has not done their thing and is slowing you down, friend, tell them hello on Slack. Do yeah. you know Slack? Do you know Slack? Slack. Hello. I just need this real quick, please, because you're holding me up. Yeah. You know, you have the jurisdiction to do that. You have the power to do that. You have a power to call a meeting if you need it for, to move your part of the business forward, and I've be just been like making sure everyone knows like everyone is working in a team. No one's isolated. No one does it because also if people aren't doing their job, it makes it harder for someone else. hundred percent. So it's about juggling all of that. And then also ad ad adhering to everyone's different styles of working. Some people really like to be left alone. Like don't bother them because if they do, like you're just pissing them off and then you're just throwing off the feng shui. Yeah. Yeah. Other people need a lot of like guidance. Oh, asking questions, making sure like they're good. Like, so just adhering to that as well. Yeah. And then also myself, you know, cause I have things to do. I need to make sure I'm prioritizing myself so that I can also do what I need to do so that we can all achieve our goals. We can all achieve, because yeah. Because there was a point where I was helping so many people. I wasn't helping myself at my part. I was, I was, I was fucking up the feng shui. It was me. <laughs> so even now, like I've started to work from home a lot more because I feel like every time I enter the warehouse, everyone's like, I'm, I'm, I'm. so I'm, I'm, I'll give you a few days for that. 
<laughs> the other days, I need to, you know, do the, the more high level stuff so that yeah. we can we can forward. shine yeah. i think the two skills that i've i've picked up is one accountability 100%. i feel like oh my God. what is what is amazing about the story you just told is that it's okay as a leader as a manager in any sort of format where you are where you are um in charge of people to put your hands up and say do you know what i fucked up and i feel like a lot of people find that quite difficult to do especially me coming from a nigerian background you know the, the, <laughs> everybody wants to be wrong and strong yeah. and it's like well i'm the boss so i think that skill alone is so important and i know you were saying it as a bad thing in terms of um you are helping everyone else but you don't have time for yourself but when i think about some leaders today there's a lot of people sitting on their high horses and watching everyone else i feel like as a leader you have to at times put on different hats uh. and sometimes the hats are not as bougie as you want them to it's all fun and games being a ceo <laughs> we all want the ceo registry yeah i want to be on a private jet but you also, <laughs> you also need to be admin. You also need to be production. Listen, Bruv. you also need to be, even if you need to clean the, 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 the warehouse, you need to be a cleaner. Mm -hmm. Like a good leader wears every single hat. So as much as, as, much as you weren't wearing your hat and you're like, all this high stuff, you were still able had the had the competence to be able to do every every single role yeah. that was outside of yours it's so important i would say for me being being good at if, if you if you're going to do with something you need to do it in every 360 in in the whole in the whole is entirety for example i am a podcaster mm -hmm. and i am a content creator but I also have production knowledge. I also have sound knowledge. I also, if, so if my sound wasn't working, I'd know how to do the levels. If this camera wasn't turning on, I'd know how to turn it on mm -hmm. and I know how to color grade and I know how to edit. So it's all about, so if my, if my editor saying, ah, I don't know how to do this. I say, okay, what are you using? Premiere, as long as it's Premiere Pro. As long as it's Anything Premiere else? Pro, any of our uh, <laughs> software, I don't know how to use it. If it's Premiere Pro, I can use it. But it's all about having those different hats on. That's it. And then also, people can't mess you around. Ah! People can't mess you around. Uh, you need to stand your ground because you cannot be having people, you know, hey, you know, trying to, like, there's there's a point where, like, it's, it's not authority. I don't want to say that because, ew, again, that sounds very <laughs> egotistical. Yeah. But more so, like, there's, like, you have the final say. Mm -hmm. And, like, if just something... So, so especially at this level now, I'm, like, an editor. So, I'm, like, I'm editing things to make sure that things are aligned with the business goals. So, it's more like project it, management. You know, yes, slightly, slightly. <laughs> but you end up... You, but you end up... But, you end up <laughs> <laughs> slightly, slightly. But, you know... It gets to the point where it's like, mm, this doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. mm, this doesn't make sense. Mm, this doesn't make sense. And like, someone might be pissed off at that, you know. Someone actually might be pissed off at that. But at the end of the day, the outcome is the right thing. I have a question for you leading up to that. <laughs> mm. Do you find it difficult being assertive oh. as a woman? Getting into the ju juicy stuff, in it, honey? Let me pick up my. <laughs> let me just <laughs> find where, where, where the rum at? It's there. It's there. Yes, thank you, darling. <laughs> thank you, darling. So at first, whoo, um, it was tough, especially now. Like you're 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 mixing everything: woman, black, Ghanaian. Hey, submissive, submissive past. Okay, mixing in the youngest child, mixing in all of these things that oh. The background is a lot. It's a lot to overcome. Mm -hmm. and, and this is like the first place that I have really had this kind of leadership. That yeah, I've led a few societies in uni, but like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't worth like a couple mil, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, it wasn't that deep. Um, but, you know, now it's, it's a lot. But, you know what? I've just had to be like, bruv, at the end of the day, like more and more and more, I'm just like more stepping into it. It's a, a gradual process. It doesn't just exist. Yeah. If you're not an assertive person, 
you have to become it. Like, yeah. you have to make sure this is a part of the role. This is a part of the leadership, you know, outside of the self, self, um, selflessness, you know, the organization, stuff like that. Like, you have to be assertive. You have to make sure, like, your point stands. Yeah. So, like, basically, I just have to say what it is. And sometimes it might come out a bit like, oh, because, it, because it's from a woman, it will always be a little bit, oh. You know, it will always and, sound and, like and, that. And you're young as well. Sorry, you didn't... I didn't ask you for your 26. age. 26. You're 26. This is, this is my sister. This is my age mate. <laughs> so you can imagine being in a space, a woman, black, mm -hmm. and young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm working with a lot of my age mates as well. Um, you know, our, our staff range from, like, 22 all the way up to, like... Oh, we have you know, a few of my aunties work with me, so, like, 40. But, like... You know, even like my auntie, I'm like telling her what to do. It's tight. Like, <laughs> tight. like my my mom comes in every now and again as well because she, she she's like, hey, it's my dream. It's my dream as well. <laughs> I will man this as well. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So she's a silent boss. She's my boss. Um, but you know, sometimes I got to tell my mom what to do. Rah. But sometimes my mom comes with something. She's like, mm, I don't believe this to be true. And I'm like, I have to back the production manager. It's crazy. But like, <laughs> this is it's what it is. At the end of the day, you know, I've appointed these people in these positions. And I go with what is right, not yeah. who it is. And where do you, where, where, where do you, you find that? Is it, is it, is it listening to your gut? Is it just confidence in yourself? Like, where do you find that, that tenacity mm -hmm. to be confident in what you're I saying. I love your English. Thank you. Know, you. Very well. I didn't graduate, but I, I can well try. Well read, well spoken. You know, I someone didn't give her a letter from the, from the king. Someone. <laughs> a letter. <laughs> you're so good here now. I didn't finish school like you. Don't worry. I didn't graduate. Hey, hey, like that matters. <laughs> Should be we are here. So we are here. Um, but... I think it's a mix of things. I think it's like, okay, purpose over everything. Because wow. without purpose, we're not here. So if we want to continue this, if everyone wants to be a part of this, the purpose is above everything. So that's where my confidence came from. Obviously, outside of that, yeah, I started to build confidence, confidence in myself and stuff. But like, the, it was the purpose. It was the purpose. It was the people we were helping over everything. And it's, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's just the way it goes. And just extending from that question, because I love the journey that you're sharing with us, that, you know, you are, you were a yes man, you were submissive, mm -hmm. and now you've managed to build this assertiveness and confidence. For anyone that is looking and watching right now, and they're feeling like, I want to start this, but I'm, I'm quite shy. I'm quite a little bit insecure. Give us the advice from, from a real OG. I was, I was insecure. I, was, I, I'm an introvert. I know. I'm an introvert. I, I was in hibernation mode for like my life, <laughs> my whole life. Um, she said, <laughs> I, I said, hide. <laughs> Where's the door? <laughs> That's what I said. Um, but I was like, you know what? My dream over this bullshit. My dream over this. What does my dream require? It requires me to be more, especially this day and age. If you want to, you want to create something, you got to create awareness. You got to create audience. You got to create something. And guess what? You don't have money to give to someone else to do that for you. So guess what? You got to do that yourself, mm -hmm. mate. I threw my insecurities out the window and I put myself on camera and I started filming videos of me doing my hair because I was like, no one's gonna buy from someone that don't know anything about hair. So I started doing that in the beginning, DMing people. The least I could say is no. The fun the funny thing is that 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 job, that um recruitment job actually helped me out because the amount of rejection I got every single day. I used to make over 120 calls a day. I was spending four or five hours on the phone. Like, I was spending every hour on the phone, but, like, if you accumulatively, I was, like, four or five hours speaking on the phone. That's a lot. That's a lot of talking. Bruv, I was, my, I was thirsty, okay? <laughs> the hydration was just wasn't there, okay? So it was dry. But the rejection was a lot. It was high, very, very high. And it just was like, you know what? The worst thing I can say is no. The worst thing I can say is no. 
worth. And you just start to remove this anxiety of like, do you know what, all these pressures and stuff. And just bask in the fact that the beginning is the best because you have nothing to prove to anyone but yourself. But yourself, yeah. No one to chat to, nothing. So it's just embracing that that stage because now you're paying people bills. It's so a different ball game. It is a different ball game. Especially when now your your belief starts to dip, your confidence starts to dip. Ah! You know what's funny? I used to reflect in my cells whenever I was having a bad month, whenever like my mind was moving crazy. Cells would go down. Wow. As soon as I started to build myself back up again, my vision, alignment, go up. I was like, nah, this, this game is different. It's not just about, you know, what you punch in the, in the keyboard in and the all keyboards. that. It's not about that. It's really about aligning and making sure that your mental is good, you know. It's even funny because um, I have a documentary with the BBC um, and it was great, but they were filming me in a very, like, integral time. Just shut down the business. Was um, about to restart it and they were filming me in Q4 last year. And, like, we, we had a month out of sales, so we were coming back and our sales dropped when we came back. Like, because like people didn't know what our name was anymore and stuff. Yeah. It was just a lot. Like, all that mind share we built over the year was just gone. And it was just like, that was just, I just was not expecting that. So now I had to balance this. And then these men had their big cameras in my face, bro. I was like, oh, <laughs> I almost. Hmm. Child, I almost. <laughs> I was like, I actually had to talk to him. I was like, guys, seriously, I'm actually going to have a panic attack if you guys keep on doing this. Keep doing this with the big ass camera and the big ass... Can you, can you say that again, please? Sorry, what did you say and, again? And, and they kept on, like, coming in unannounced and for hours in the day, like, half the day, all the day, for three months, for 30 minutes. I was like, Lock. During that time where, obviously, um, just, to, um, just to set the scene... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were originally called one name mm -hmm. due to copywriting issues yeah. you had to change the name mm -hmm. you've just said that because of this sales dropped mentally you went okay how did you how was your mindset how was your mental and how did you overcome the obstacle Okay, so July 2021, I get a cease and desist in my house. My my mom hands it to me because she thinks it's a, a certificate or something. She's dancing. She, I said, Mom, I don't know if you knew what you did, but wow, evil. Because how are you handing me? Are you jiggling your... You know, you're jiggling your, 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 your <laughs> jiggling your body. Like, this is, you know, a letter from the king. <laughs> <laughs> letter from, letter from, the, from king. the king. It was a letter from the king. Um, it was a letter from someone... <laughs> the town over with the similar business name. It was like, cease and desist. Get out. Destroy. I saw destroy. Destroy, destroy. I said, wow. This is Not dramatic. destroy. Call, what the English? Call the lawyers up real quick. Please, someone, please help me because this person's crazy. Please. I have a leg to stand on, no? Because they, they had all their things and it, mm, I was like, oh, come on, man. Nah, couldn't win it. And guess what happened after that? I get dragged into jury duty for two weeks. I said, is this, what, who oh has something my. against me? Who's been paying? Who's been, someone's doing something because you're going to tell me once I, I just moved into my warehouse as well. Just now got, what's it called? Rent. I've, 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 I've got this place for two years and I've got staff. I've got people to pay and people are telling me that I have to shut down my business. What the hell? Wow. And I get put into jury duty all in all within like two weeks. I said, wow, this is a lot. The mental was finished. I would tell them I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm still thinking of a lie to tell them when they say come to jury. I would say I'm pregnant. Or it something. Was a mess. You have to say something. I'm sick. What would you say to them? Anyways, don't worry, we'll come. We'll come back to them. <laughs> we'll come back so to how them. how did you how did you deal with that obstacle? mentally how did you get over that because that 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 to me a lot of people would have shut down 100 percent. you're in a place where you've just moved into your six sixty six i was gonna say 16 six oh, thousand story for next six thousand story <laughs> warehouse yep you've hired a team that you now have the responsibility to pay their wages and you have to close shop on top of that jury duty. Uh -huh. 
How, How did drug you do case with that? I was on. Oh my god, he did it. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he did that shit. <laughs> it was it was wild. I can't even lie. But um, even in that time, I had to come up with a new name, and I was like, "How?" It was just a lot. And I took a week out. I was like, "Guys, I'm sorry." Like just a week. And the thing is that even when I got handed that letter, like one of my one of my staff was there. And he was like, oh, do you want me to leave? And I was like, bro, I can't. I, I don't know what I'd do if you weren't here. So stay, please. I need someone in my face because wow. it was a lot. Like, I just couldn't comprehend. Like, I couldn't even have an anxiety attack because I was just like, I just don't understand what's happening. I was just getting stressed, bro. And then everyone was like, no, nah, let's fight it. Let's fight it as our name. The, the, the staff are like, no, nah, we got this. And I was like, the lawyers are saying, we ain't got it. <laughs> we ain't got it. So guys. unless you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna pull up and in the job, and I had to say, I said, Do you know what, guys, I am not fighting this with my money, because remember, we're bootstrapped. Please, we signed from hundred pounds. We only have the money we have. Yeah, there's no in- outside capital. If there's I no now investors. waste this on legal matters and we still have to shut down, it's not gonna happen. So I, I was like, Do you know what, we're just gonna change. I don't know what this name is gonna be. But yeah, I need I need a week. I need a week. And I was just like, oh, I was just trying so hard to just figure it out. Like, And I was like, I just came to the conclusion that I just had no choice but to figure it out. I had no choice but to yep. keep it going because there was just myself. I just could not. This was not the time I was going to quit. This was not the time I was going to quit. And actually, funny enough, I actually just saw my friend go through the exact same thing. It was wow. so weird how we went through the same thing in the same year, a couple months apart. But he, he bounced he bounced back. I said, okay, well if he can bounce back, then I can bounce back. Mm-hmm. You know? So I'll bounce back. I wasn't necessarily like cheerful and peppy like like when I first started the business. Oh no, but I was still feeling away. It was a lot of emotions. But I was mm-hmm. like, you know what, let's let's figure it out. So then that's when all my processes came in. That's when I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna be a serious person. Serious gonna, babe. I was serious that day, you know. I had a notion and I, I put every department in there and what everyone needs to do so that we can recover this business, what we need to do, all of this stuff. We had to put all of our stock, our packaging, everything back. Wow. We had to literally throw everything in the bin, reorder, redesign, every, it costs a lot. How we, much did you lose at that time? Chai Lai, Chai Lai. Be honest. Half, half a million. Like, you, we're, we're, you're considering opportunity costs, especially the trajectory we're at. Mm-hmm. We were, like, get, we were about to hit, like, a, a 500K month. Month. We were, like, on that trajectory to, like, be very close to a 500K month. Um, obviously, the packaging and stuff, that's, like, probably 20, 30K. Um, like, not even the packaging that was used as well, the packaging that we had ordered. In, in advance, yeah. You know, ingredients. It's just The marketing had to be the changed. The marketing, everything. everything. And just the mind share. If we're talking about opportunity costs, it was probably well over a million. Um, it's just a lot, man. But What kept you going? If, do you know what? A heart line. I had that warehouse I just got, I said, that warehouse I just got, it's said two years, I just signed the paper. That's what kept me going. <laughs> That's what kept me going. You? Because, because now landlord will come again. Hey, Emma, um, you haven't really been in the, way. what's going on? Yeah. You just have to start <laughs> selling organs at that point. <laughs> it's either you, feel, and you know what, yeah, I feel like a lot of times, <laughs> Exactly the story you're t- saying. When your back is pushed against the wall, hmm. there's two things. Yep. You fight. Or you fight. Or you faint. <laughs> <laughs> you fight or you just you fight faint. Or you faint. You I, I, I think I did both at the same time. <laughs> you faint. You have to. Honestly, I feel like the best. The best times in my life is when I've had, when I've been pushed to the wall. I feel like a lot of people. Um, don't take their situation as a allegory of... Just the English again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, for me, when I look at a bad situation, I look at it as an allegory of a, of a boxing ring. Mm-hmm. If I see something that is not going right, I was... I look the de- devil in the face and I say, it's either me or it's you. And, <laughs> and it's, it's not, not going to be me. <laughs> that means it's you. I would do... Like, honestly, because... A lot of times, and, and I think because of situations that I've been in in the past, I've kind of realised that um, some situations that 
I, I get in, I, I've re, I, I realized that through the power of God, I do believe I have control of every situation. I, I don't have, um, I don't have, what's the word? I don't have control of what comes at me. Yes, but your response to But it. my response yeah. and the result, that's, I feel like I have control over. It. So if something comes at me, I'm like, it's either I'm a winner in this or I'm a loser at this. I'm and I loser. can't lose. I'm not a loser. You get to the point in your life where it's no longer about you. And if you lose, remember when you said at the beginning, you were like, it's just you. Mm -hmm. you get to a point that if you lose, it's not just you anymore. Mm -hmm. You have everyone else that's going to fall when you fall. So you have to then fight extra hard to make sure that you win. So for me, listening to your story, it's like I'm just seeing a woman that's like, I have so much on my back right now that I cannot afford to lose because it's not just going to gonna be me that suffers for this. It's going to be the people at work the peop my 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 mother, my aunties, all these people that you're carrying on your head. That's like And don't forget the customers. And the customers. Ooh, the customers. I wanna actually move to the conversation of planted. And I wanna talk about the industry as a whole because I feel like women are like you are so important. I was horrified to find oh. Say it. I know what you're gonna say that the majority mm. of black hair brands, yeah. all these brands are owned by white, men. white people. White men specifically. White men specifically. So all the decision makers when it comes to the hair products that are supposed to be helping black women come from people who have no clue what it's to be one, Black <laughs> or two, a woman. <laughs> they don't have a clue. Yeah. I feel like people like you are so important because you can understand the needs of your people because the hair is growing from your scalp. That's it. Being in the space that you're in, how difficult did you feel as a black woman to penetrate this market? Bruv, I was just looking at the big people, man. And also, like, I just want to preface that Shea Moisture is still sort of black owned, but it's majority white owned. I just want to preface that before someone comes to me. Um, we don't so... need another assistant. <laughs> bless, 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 bless. <laughs> we don't need another assistant. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> Hey, I know. I, I've been here. We've been here. Yes, been here long enough. Uh, but, mate, I was just like, wow, this is ghetto, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe this. Um, and don't get twisted. Like, even my brand, like, it is actually very inclusive. So anyone, and anyone, even any age, any person can use it. Yeah. But I will always have an affinity to my people because, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, the hair's going from my scalp. So I know exactly what we need i know yes. exactly what we do not need i know what the reaction is to those products because that's what i was using them yes that can to leave in that curling one cream the flakes that my hair gets after i style my hair why do i have to why do i have to choose between styling my hair or looking like it's christmas why because I if, I, if because... I tip my head this way the the what's good the snow the snow angel i can create on this side. On this side. Uh, it's so unnecessary. Who who approved this formulation? And why? Hasn't it changed? Because they don't care. So you can see, like, and the funny thing is, a lot of businesses don't care about you. Yeah. Like, it's just a money grab. And you can try and paint it however you like. But it's the, the what's good? It's in the pudding. Yeah. Just gonna put it and the put it is the product. And if the product sucks, it's because they didn't care. And the funny thing, I've pulled products from from selling for months because I was like, nah, this formulation isn't good enough. People are asking, where is it? Where is it? I said, oh, it'll come back when it comes back. Because I am not selling anything that's rubbish. Yeah. And that's a fact. It's just sad. It's just sad to see the industry. And don't get twisted, yeah. there's the, the other side where it's like there's a lot of people fixing it, which is amazing. 
For example, you, honestly, the proof is in the pudding. And I feel like the majority, from what I can see, face value, the majority mm. of um, the sales and the hype is is a referral. Referral, product review, like everyone, every time you go on a, a planted page you can see people's results so from people that have had alopecia people that have had um hair thinning because of uh uh protective styling mm -hmm. that's um, protective how <laughs> protected the thing that's protected is what's pulling me back is the same thing as me or when i protected i lost how those How those it? kind of stuff you can <laughs> literally see like all over the page i think that was your main marketing push yeah because i realized that like no one's making something for results no one's making something to actually solve a problem like my hair being soft isn't enough babe. wow like, i need it to be soft and strong i need to be soft and thick i need to be soft and you know i don't move my head this way and half of it falls off my head that's what was happening and that's what's been happening for so many other people or diy stuff don't get twisted i get it i was doing the diy stuff as well until my mom did the diy you know the rice water Oh gosh! Right, you know when you soak it depends whatever rice you want. You can put wild rice, you know, basmati rice, bas rice. You can long soak grain, it, you know, whatever you want. Soak it in. My mom used that um, protein overload due to lack of education. Hair fell out. Just as I start, just as I made inches, which is the timing was immaculate. But wow. like, you know, like there's a lot of things here. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, right, like. I have to make something that works. That was my way to enter. So I was like, I can't see anything here. And even the people that are doing it, they're not marketing enough. And obviously I don't, I don't do consultations anymore. I now make the products. I now have my own brand. So I need to do what I need to do, use my knowledge and penetrate the market. And that's exactly what I did. Made, yeah, went results first, went purpose first. Purpose first always. Purpose do you know first. what, I'm, I'm, I'm loving and just just because this question is more for people who are trying to find their fitting mm. footing how did you find your purpose you got you got to find it that's the mm. point but a lot of people think that it's gonna you know this lap is gonna fall on it no we're gonna have an epiphany friend i do you know how many things i went through i went through so many business models so many things and the funny thing is I always wanted to start my own brand. I didn't know what it would be. First, I thought I was going to start a watch brand because I was really into watches at one point. Clothing brand because I really like clothes. I thought I, I never really had it. Mm, but I always had this weird thing for wellness. I was just like, man, I just, the way, it's the immediate impact. It's seeing someone go from like this to this. I just, that was always a thing. But I just never gave myself the courage to do it until I was literally forced into it. And I think you actually have to sift through your interests. You have to sift through the opportunities that are either there or that you must create and figure it out. It's yeah. just not going to come. Did you know you were going to do this? Honestly, I'm, <laughs> one, thing, one thing I've learned about people uh -huh. is that, and, and it's the same thing that, I experience is that I feel like purpose I feel like your purpose leaves clues that's it I feel like it's so weird because I really struggled for a long time to know what I wanted to do but something that was very innate to me I said I don't know what I want to do but I know that I like to talk to people very I said and I don't know how I'm going to make money doing that but all I know is that the job that I have mm -hmm. has to involve talking to people and it was that was the only thing that was specific to my knowledge yeah aside from that i had no clue what i wanted to do i i said it has to involve people because i like people and i like talking so i thought i was going to be a uh, therapist that's what so I you and me were even gunning for the same position. The same position. Oh my god! I took psychology in A level. Wow. I thought I wanted to be a therapist, but I was like, that's more listening. But I want to advise people. Mm. So how do I do that? I thought it was going to be a motivational one of those people. Yeah, you know, Honestly, but when I that. <laughs> when I did walk into my purpose, yeah. is when everything just went boom. Yes. It just starts yeah. to skyrocket. It just You're just like, to... ah, what's going on here? And it's the same with you when you're like. 
I knew I wanted to do business. Mm-hmm. And I knew I would like to wellness. I don't feel like people are so far off no. from their purpose. No. But it's because we're going back to the traditional mm-hmm. standard of things yep. that a lot of times people try to fit their purpose into traditional ways of That's it. making money. I had no idea that I could get paid being myself. I would have gone to go and do that since. You know. I would have gone to that since. If we knew. I was trying to fit into the traditional, or maybe I should go therapy. Do you need be a psychologist? Do you need do something like that? I thought I was going to do work with women in domestic violence and advise them and things like that. But to, to, to be where I am now, it makes perfect sense. To be where you are now, it makes perfect sense. So I feel like what you said about people finding their likes and their interests and things like that, like, honestly, it's something so innate yeah. that you can't put your finger on it. Do you know what's funny? Yeah. Do you know what's funny? I'm, no one shoot me, please. Even gu- guns are illegal in this country, so please, don't shoot me. But a lot of people are running away from themselves. So we've got social media. Yeah. We've got so many distractions. We've got friends. We've got activities. We've got, you know, DLT. We've got we've got so many things we Shout can do. DLT. Shout out to DLT. Yeah, because I love them. Yeah, that's a, that's an event. Yes. And I had a good time. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but do you know what's funny? My life changed when I did soul searching. I read myself for filth, but I also actually dug deep. How many people journal? How many people talk to themselves? How many people meditate? How many people drive their energy and their days from within and not from without external wow. you know external validation or um what people what what will people say yeah if i do this you know it's funny because um my friend um her name is nia and she runs a very successful business in the u.s the dreadlock lady dreadlocks exactly yes. she's got locks and she's she's killing it and when i had my podcast and i was speaking to her and she was like do you know what it's funny because i i talk i i told her about the, the UK culture, London or maybe South England culture, if you will, about, you know, we don't like to be a beg. We don't like to be a beg. We're like, ah, oh, I don't want, if I look like a beg, I'm, I'm stopping, yeah. stop, no, mm the, the very beg, the very beg you don't want to be is the thing that'll get you what you want. Wow. And she said, if being a beg gets me what I want, then I'm a beggar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the begging, begging I'm the beggar because everyone I'm seeing be a beg has gotten what they want. Yeah. Rah, that's insane, you know. What she's saying is so true. She's so right. And I'm like, rah, when it comes to you going after what you want, I'm sorry, but no one can get in your way. Like, not even you. Respectfully, not, not even, even you. And the funny thing is, when I actually started, like, after lockdown, no, during lockdown, sorry. The, the gateway, actually, I read I read some things from this guy that he's, like, very much into mindfulness and stuff. He's a successful entrepreneur in Canada. And I, I get his new newsletters, and I was always, like, you know, fighting the information. But this time I read it. I sat, I sat there and read it. And you know what? It's, it had a line underlined, and it said, get out of your own way. Wow. And you know when you're the problem? <laughs> <laughs> You are your own problem. It hurts. <laughs> There's no one to blame. There's no one to it's blame. It's you. You have to look in the mirror and dig deep. But when I started that self awareness journey, even to this day, like I can, I know when I'm, I'm like, I'm a, you're really, you're really fucking shut up. You know, you get on a high horse. Stop. You're, you're, you're actually fuck up the set. Like you're actually, you're, fu- you know, you're pushing yourself away from what you want. You know, you are the problem. You are the problem. Get back on track. Journal, whatever yeah. you need to do. And everyone's going to find a different modem of, of, of you know, self-discovery. But that's the point. S- discover yourself. Yeah. I know so many people who have no idea who they who are. Who they are, yeah. It's sad. We have so many stimulus that takes us away and just allows us to exist. But it's like, if you really want to be in your purpose and... If you don't like that phrase, if you really want to be happy, if you wanna, are you happy? I'm happy, yo. I'm happy too, even with the stress. Because yes. happiness doesn't mean that there won't be stress. There'll be stress. Yes. But you're okay because you're like, 
I'm doing what I'm I love. Do, I'm aligned with my life. Yes. And there's so many people unaligned and I, people hate their jobs, people hate their lives. This is not a, you know, entrepreneurship versus, I don't, people aren't built for this. I'm not, I wasn't built for the workplace. People aren't built for this life. Everyone do what they need to do, but whatever you must do, whatever is your best alignment, like, please, please, please. Just, just discover yourself. Discover yourself. So you can find what you need to do. So what were the things you you mentioned, obviously, um, somebody you was watching, mindfulness. So interesting. At that time, I started watching Tony Robbins. Oh, I love him. <sighs> That's my tall daddy. He will, he will really, he will really tell you you're yeah, stupid. You're stu- <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, in terms of, in terms of self discovery, what were the steps that you took to? find and identify yourself and also i and also identify the things that are keeping you mm-hmm. so i i mean hey anxiety it's funny i i would i i experienced a few instances of depression and anxiety in my life i don't have any more we'll save that one for later but i yeah. just wanted to say that um but yeah, listening to people or reading things that open my eyes and, you know, outside of like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like four years ago, or five years ago, like it's about just, you know, discovering what life really is. Yeah. I basically came into information. I was like, you know, you can actually design your own life. Like you have the power to do that. Yeah. It might sound so simple, but I never believed it. I never even knew that was a thing up until the point. And it was funny. I had a podcast and I had a dream. And I was striving towards what I wanted, but I still didn't believe I deserved it. That's another thing. Even al- allowing yourself to deserve the thing you've never had, deserve the life you've never had. If you want to go in PJs, private jets, you might, like, that's not, that's not my life. That, I've never seen a private jet in my life. Yeah. Why am I all of a sudden allowed to have a private jet? But that's someone's normal, you know? Yeah. And you, you got to be delusional to now bec- make that your normal so that it can actually exist one day. Yeah. Reality is for you to mold. Reality is for you to create. You are in charge of creating your life. That was the most powerful information I discovered at the time. And then... The things that I was doing that was holding myself back, fear, allowing fear, allowing people's um, opinions, allowing people's um, thoughts or um, allowing anxiety or lack of information or um, lack of experience stop me from all of these things. But it's like you'll learn, you'll, the biggest experience teacher is experience. Yeah. Just do it. Just do it. And you'll you'll get the experience you want. You can learn along the way. You don't have to know everything at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You, you don't, don't have to get, be perfect. You don't have you to start. be perfect. And hey, this is the third iteration of packaging, sir. And don't get twisted. At some, sometime next year, I'm going to be itching myself, saying I'm going to go again. We go again because I never started out with perfection in mind. I was like, it's going to get better over time. I don't, I don't even have the money for perfection, my G. I didn't even have the money for it. And some people focus on the wrong things in the beginning. Yeah. Especially in the UK. We're going to go. And uh, it obviously it depends on what business you're trying to start because some people have to go out the gate with that. You know, the locks, you know. <laughs> you know, the high dollars oh, yeah. on the packaging. You know, it got to look cute. But for me, I, I progressed into it. I'm so glad I did because I focused on the the main thing, which was good product, good people. And then the good packaging came along the way. But the results and the people were the foundation. Exactly. Honestly, that's amazing. And again, going back to the theme of making black history, I feel like you were so important in my thought process. I think one, because I've been able to see your journey, which has been phenomenal. But two, I feel like watching you and the conversations that I see you have about your mindset and about the eternal monologue that you have in the day-to-day life I feel like it was so important to bring you on to speak about and also not only are you humble not only are you somebody from my culture and background Mm -hmm. you also 
defeat everything that society thinks about us. And not every boss is a white, blonde, <laughs> 20 something year old with mommy and daddy money. Some of us are black, mm -hmm. 4C hair, mm -hmm. 26 year old, building a multi-million hair empire. So thank you so much for coming. And one last question for everyone that is watching here today. How can they make black history? Um, that's a big question. And I think let's, let's let go of all the pressures because remember when I started the business, I, I, I had high hopes, but I didn't have a high anxiety because of them hopes. I was just like, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus on the process and the results will come whenever they come. I think it's literally just about focusing on the process, you know, the process of becoming that person. What's the process of going from zero to 10K? 10K to 100K, 100K to 500K, 500K to a million. Those are different people. And what's the process of you becoming those people? And what's the process of the business becoming that stage of the business? I think process is integral and belief and skill and priorities. What actually builds a business? It's attention, it's a good product. It's being able to tell a story. It's being able to build something that people want to be a part of. People don't want to be a part of just anything, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's a lot of brands out there. It's harder than ever. So you've got to be different. You've got to look at what people are doing and be like, mm, there's something you missed out and I'm going to take advantage of that. That's there as well. You know, your unique selling point. Um, but, you know, outside of like those foundational things, it's you who you are, who you want to become, and the journey to you doing that, finding the right information, executing on it, not being scared. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Anyone can do whatever they set their mind to. Me and Joyce are a testament of that. We were in completely different places when we met two years ago. Oh, we were. We and definitely the funny were. thing is, <laughs> there's people I met the time, you know, I met you, You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> we should have laughed. <laughs> and, and no, no, no. The, the thing about it is that it's, they might have given up. Yeah. And, and there's, there's, there's nothing wrong. There's, there's a problem giving up, but there's nothing wrong with pivoting. Yes. You're absolutely right. If this wasn't the right thing and you pivot to something else, amazing. That's okay. You You're still going. The dream? Problem. You lost. You lost out. You lost. You lost out. But my sister, thank you so much for coming. Guys, honestly, please check out Planted. It is a phenomenal brand. We are going to be putting everything on the link description. And I hope you guys are as inspired and as motivated as I am. But anyways, I'm out, girl. We out. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon. Good morning, good evening, and good motherfucking night. <laughs>